viewers, Mezcal here. What we're looking at is a motor generator design based on uh, the work of um, the late Robert Adams, who's a New Zealand inventor. Here's the drawing of it. He's using uh, big magnets that uh, have the strength of the meridiniums. That's the basic setup there. He's using a thing called a star wheel commutator, which is his invention. That's it there. It's basically insulation with a brass disc. It's just a standard sort of commutator. Um, I'm not using a commutator, I'm using a reed switch. And something I'd like to point out to people that are doing anything like this. The, um, you can see how small that neodymium magnet is. And I've read in literature from uh, Robert Adams that um, when it comes to using the high field strength magnets such as neodymium, um, you need to increase your voltage increase, uh, decrease the thickness of the winding to overcome the field strength to get any effect. This um, rotor here is the switching magnet which pulses that reed switch there which turns on the uh, drive magnet at the right moment to push it away. That shaft there is made from brass, so there's no interfering magnetic effects from any iron in it. We've got brass screws holding the system all together, and it's all wood. Um, it was something Adam stated that you want to eliminate any eddy current losses due to uh, magnetism or anything else nearby. So yeah, that's what I, I laid that up. Probably ten years ago, I started working with these little things and uh, dropped the whole idea and come back to it. All right, now yeah, let's get it going. Right, so this is how it works. You've got a rotor, you've got magnets all the way around it. The poles, like poles, are all pointing outwards. It doesn't matter which way around. So let's say it's north. So you've got all north poles pointing outwards, and then you have a coil bar in it and let's say the rotation is this way and you have a switching mechanism which turns the coil on and off in very short pulses so that this magnet here is attracted to the iron core inside the coil and it's attracted towards it because it is not a magnet, it is just iron. And when it gets to the point, say, just past that line there, let's say that was nice and straight, a bit of a bodgy drawing, but you get the picture. When the magnet is just past the point of no return, if there was no electrical input it would bounce back fail to go forward, this very small pulse delivered to the coil makes this now a north pole which pushes on the north here, repels it and in that moment when the brake happens after this has been switched on you get a, a collapsing field which makes the magnet the electromagnet flip back and forth so it goes north, south, north, south, sort of like the, the um, echo you get in a resonant coil or um, capacitor. So let's fire it up and give you a demo and show you what we're playing with.
adjust the positioning of the reed switch to optimise the short pulse. I need the scope for this. There's quite a large spike there that I can't quite see. This is a 10 megahertz scope and it's probably better off with a higher rated scope. Just move the position of this. You can see we're adjusting the waveform. Motor slows down if I go too far forward. It's a nice spike there. Come back the other way. That slows down again. We want that spike though. Okay, at the moment it's drawing 20 milliamps at 24 volts. Very, very smooth. See the wave back there. Move the reed switch a tiny bit. Back the other way. I'm going to do 20 millimeters. Not too far now. There's a fine line you've got to get to um, get your lower stand draw. Still, it's a pretty damn efficient motor. It's not the strongest torque. You stick your finger up here and you slow down. See the amp draw increases when it's slowing. According to the diagram in the book, pick up coils. I've only got two pick up coils on it at the moment. And that's here. And around the back on the other side. And uh, they're wired up in the series. Drive coils are in parallel. I get about six volts between the two of them, and that's without using a brake. And then put another reed switch around the other side, and that provides a brake for this one. And I'm taking a one wire back in there from there on the other side. Scope off. So we've got one wire coming off there with the drive coil, throwing its back in there into the drive uh, into the generator pickup coils. That's our drive coil signal, and then we'll go to what is uh, being made by the generator coils going through this bridge rectifier up here. They're, um, what do you call them, signal diodes. We've got the AC output plus the uh, reed switch breaking the um, AC coming from the generator coils. There's the DC side. Ten volts. 